Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Moo ICT. Uh, today we're going to be uh, demonstrating how to make a simple top-down shooting game. Uh, so in this one is themed after a zombie shooter. So you have the player, the player health and we can keep track of the ammo and the kills. Uh, let's take a look at the game first. So as you can see I can move uh, up, down, left and right. I can shoot in that direction as well. So I just move away. Okay, so I can shoot in any direction that I'm facing. Once the ammo goes down a certain amount, then a ammo notification comes on. So you can then go collect that and then get more ammo to play the game again. So as you can see, you can keep the score of how many zombies you've killed. And obviously if our health bar goes down below one, then the game ends because the player is dead. And then you can press enter to restart the game again. And that's it, and we can start over. So you can shoot in all four directions. Because you know, it gets a bit challenging once the ammo sort of runs out and you have to go collect the ammo. So, alright. So this game is based in Windows form with C sharp programming. Okay. So the first thing is uh, let's go to the li uh, link in the description and then you can download the images for this game from the tutorial page right here. Uh, you can also check out the written tutorial on the website um, it's always available there as well so with the images downloaded we can follow through the, this tutorial quite easily so let's go and make a new project first so it's windows form app dot net framework so we're going to create a sh shooter game oh. naming the solution so it's easier to find later on uh, first thing first let's change the title of this game so zombie shooter okay okay let's change the size of the form to 140 by 700 okay so that's going to be the stage for the game let's change the background of the stage to 64, 64 and 64. So it looks a bit like this, so it's like a concretey grey colour. Okay, so we're gonna need about three labels. So let's do that first. So this one is first. So we can go here and change the font size to say 14. Change the four colour to white. So we can see it. And then this is going to say ammo zero okay so let's change this one to txt ammo so let's move just make another copy of the same one and then we can name this one txt school and this is going to be kills yeah, so it's going to show how many zombies we killed in this game and this one uh, we don't need to name this one anything, we just need to say health. So there's a visible indication of the health bar here. Okay, so what we need here is the progress bar. So we can drag and drop a progress bar here. And then, of course, make that slightly longer so it just fits into that little spot. Okay, so. Right, so at the moment the value is going to be set to zero so you can set that to like let's say 100 and then you fill up obviously if it's done to a even if it's done to a 50 so as you can see kind of yeah so we just need to change the value with another integer between a zero and a hundred it's quite nice so now we can go here and name this one health bar We need a picture box for the player. Okay, so let's call this one player here. Uh, we're going to set it to auto size because there's going to be four different pictures uh, in between the player. So uh, it'd be best if the 
picture size is determining the size of the picture box so that way the hit boxes we don't have to determine what their sizes are for each one and then to calculate what the hit boxes are going to be like so if I right click on this picture box go to choose image so project resource file go to import so these are all the pictures that are downloaded from the Mo ICT website so as you can see you got the player down left right up ammo the dead image for the player and the zombie down left right and up select all of them click open and we're just going to select up for the beginning part of the game okay so that is that so we leave the player there so that's basically all we need to do in the form of gui for this game really um except for we need to still need to add the timer okay so let's add the timer name this one game timer set interval to 20 and then set that to true yeah set that to true for now because once we do the restart function then we can set it back to false later on okay so the rest of the stuff that we need to do is going to be primarily done through code so let's go and add a few events that we need for this game so click on the timer go to the events window type in main timer event okay um, let's see click on the form just the empty part of the form find the key down and key up function so say key is down and then when key is up okay so these are the three functions that we have uh, we also need to add a class to this game because the bullet itself is going to be done from a separate class so a class is basically like a object so we're gonna put in um, inside the bullet object there'll be a timer and then the bullet will know itself which way to move when it is shot okay so if I right click on this solutions inside the solution explorer the name of the game go to add and then go to class so just type in here bullet like this just make sure it's a capital B because you good or good practice to uh, name the classes with a capital letter. Okay, so this is the class at the moment. We'll come back to this just in a minute. Okay, so let's uh, write some code. So first thing first, I'm going to make a few empty functions. So let's just, just say private void shoot. say shoot bullet right and we're just going to use a string called direction inside of this one okay and then we also go to private void make zombies so we're going to dynamically create the zombies with the picture boxes and then we're also going to have a restart game function so let's add the variables for this game so we need a few booleans so boom, so we can group them together when we're declaring them so go left go right go up go down those are the four that we know and then obviously yes, we're going to say game over as well and that's another boolean by default all of their um, values are going to be set to false so it's okay so let's go string facing let's set that to up so it's about you know which way the player is going to be facing by default so because it's facing up which is going to set that one by default to up okay so int play health is going to be set to a hundred so that's going to be linked to the progress bar speed equal to 10 and base speed is equal to 3 let's go make a new random one so rand equals new random 
Okay, uh, we also need a list of picture boxes. So what we need here, the reason we need this is because we're gonna add all the zombies inside of this list. So it becomes a lot easier to keep track of the zombies in the scene. So a list is basically like an array so we can keep them grouped together so it's a lot easier for us to remove them from the game because they're going to be whenever they get shot they're going to have to be removed and then added again so this is a much more efficient way for us to sort of create an object keep in the scene and then remove it when we don't need it anymore go and add the key is down function okay so if i said e your key code is keys dot left right so then obviously we go, go left is equals to true and we also say now facing is equals to left okay then we say player dot image is equals to properties or resources dot left okay so whenever the left button is pressed this is what we're going to do the next one is going to be in you know, key code is equals equals keys dot right so in this case we're going to say go right boolean is going to become true facing is going to be right So we're going to change the image to the right. Okay, and now if we go here, e. keys to up. So you go up. We set that to true. Facing becomes up, and then of course we say player dot image equals. the up and then last one is going to say if keys dot down so say go down is equals to true and then facing equals to down So this is the up, down, left, right instructions for this game. So what we've done is if the, any of these keys are pressed, we are going to respond to it appropriately by changing the booleans, changing the facing string, and then also changing the image of the player. Okay, so and let's go and set up the key is up part. So inside the key is up part, basically what we're going to do is we can simply copy and paste all of this from here and we don't need these two lines okay, just to save some time okay. so if any of these keys are released we're going to change that boolean that's been set to true we're going to set it back to false so when the keys are released we want the character to basically stop moving so with that done now let's focus on the bullet part so so the way the game is going to work is once you, you know, you can move the character with the arrow keys and when you press space, you should be able to shoot in the direction that you are facing. So if I go here and say if, uh, and key code. so this, in this case, what we're looking for is if the space key is released, right? So we don't want it once the space key is pressed. So say keys dot space, right? So in this case, that's right. And then as soon as that button is pressed, we're going to run this function that's going to create the bullet for us. So we're going to say, okay, and the um, the string for the direction that we are looking for is going to be the facing string that we've been changing once the keys are pressed. Okay, so we're just going to turn in facing right here. Okay, let's get some of the movement 
um, ready for the player inside the timer. Okay, so first thing first is if um, player health is you know, greater than one, right? So basically, the player still has health. Then health var dot value is equals to player health uh, because remember the health bar cannot contain any negative value or any decimal value. So this is why we need to. Uh, this is one way to stop the error. So if you didn't, if you just had this line inside the timer, then once the health bar goes, uh, play health goes below zero, it will crash the game. So this is one of the safest ways that we can do this. Okay, so we can go and add a few more things to this, and then for now we'll just say game over to true. Okay, we don't have to stop the timer or anything like that. So. All right, let's actually link these up so we don't have to worry about them later on. So ammo is going to be equals to ammo txt school dot text. Equals kills plus score. Mr. the score uh, score integer from the list okay so right now we got the score there that's all set up all right great so now we can say if go left is equal to this true and of course player dot left is still greater than zero so we don't want it to go leave from the left of the left of the screen so you can say player dot left is minus equals speed so go right is true and plus play the width is still less than this dot client size dot width so it's still inside the um still inside the boundaries then player dot left is going to be plus equals speed. Okay, let's go and say if go up is equals equals true, and player dot top is still greater than zero. Then so we move it upwards, and then uh, the similar way we move, going to move it left and right basically. So if go down is True and player dot top plus player dot height is still less than so in this case we're looking for the width in this case we're looking for the height okay so let's say player dot top is going to be plus equals speed right there so let's go give it a go and see if they can actually move it around Alright, so health bar is working. Alright, so I can move the player up, down, left and right. So I can't move from this side. I can't leave from this side. Okay, that's cool. Actually, what I can do is, if I can move the player like just here and stop it so it doesn't go and like cover those text. So, what if I moved it right here? 40 okay so the trick is if it's still greater than 40 instead of 0 so I can go over here but it stops there so I can't really it's still a little bit actually yeah so see that line there so instead of that I'll just say 45 probably let's go try again all right, look at that, perfect. Mm. Okay, so this player stays in the middle of the scene. Can't go anywhere. Just gonna have to spawn some zombies. And you're gonna have to shoot them. So if I press space, nothing is happening right now because the bullet's not going to spawn. So 
let's go do that now. Okay, so inside the class, what we're going to need to do is these are the namespaces that this class is using. So we're going to need two more namespaces added to this because that's what the, those are the two that we're going to be using the most. So let's say using system dot drawing because we need the color from that one, and then using system dot windows dot dot forms okay because we're going to need the time and few of the picture boxes and stuff like that from this one okay let's start by making some public variables so the public variables are the ones that we can access from outside the class so from this script we can access though these public variables but if anything is private from this script we won't be able to access that okay let me show you how that works so let's say string direction right so and then we also need a public variable int called bullet left right and public int bullet top so the top and the left location of the bullet okay and this is going a private variable so we can also say private int like this and say speed equals let's say 20 okay and then obviously you can create another private int sorry private uh, let's say picture box yeah so picture box bullet equals new picture box so we're creating a new instance of the picture box class okay in this case we are creating a custom class okay let's create a new timer class actually so timer so create another private one so you just follow the same template so timer same bullet timer equals new timer right okay okay so it's time to make a function inside this class but what we want to do is we want to make a public uh, function that we can access and sort of control from outside this class so let's go and make a public void make bullet function right um, okay right. that doesn't need to happen there you go so uh, inside this class we're going to accept a argument of a form called form okay so it's just an argument so we can link a form where we want to add this bullet to because we want to add this bullet to this form so from this script we can reference this current form one into this function so this bullet gets added to that okay so let's try and um, let's see let's try and make this work so let's say bullet dot back color right now so this is why we need the system to drawing this one otherwise we're going to be able to access it um, so this is why we need the color dot white okay so what is as soon as we used color dot white this line here became active because right now we're using this namespace Okay, so then you got bullet dot size equals new size, and then we're just gonna say five pixels by five pixels, really. So we don't have to worry about that. Bullet should have a tag called bullet, All right? Uh, bullet dot left. So this is where these public variables are gonna come handy. So bullet left. bullet top okay bullet to bring to front so we are basically going to add it so it's you know in front of it so say form dot controls to add bullet okay so what's happening here is that that this we are calling this form here right so each of these forms have a control and an add function so by using that we can add the bullet to the form now it's time to set up the timer so let's say bullet timer so bullet timer to interval is equal to speed so it's 20 milliseconds right so and then obviously we're going to say bullet timer dot tick so here we're going to so the way we've done 
with this timer we added a event to it here uh, because the class here doesn't have a GUI you know for us to sort of click and add that thing to it so we kind of have to write into the code and it's actually really easy so all you have to do is just say plus equals new event handler like so and then you write the function name inside of here okay so you can just say uh, bullet timer event like this and then that's it okay I know it's gonna be red because obviously it doesn't exist anymore but we're gonna add it add to in a minute okay and lastly we're gonna say bullet timer dot start okay so so each of these bullets are gonna come with its own timer and then it's going to know which way to move inside the timer function so let's go and do that Okay, so I'll say private so I'm just going to type that in there and inside of here we're gonna to have to type in object sender because we need a object to send the event and then obviously say event ARGS E okay so right now this is the template so that's pretty easy so we know like Visual Studio does make it quite easy for us. We don't have to type all that in. It does type in quite a bit for us. But it's not like, you know, there's a lot to type to link an event to this. Okay. So let's go. And so what we want to do here is we want to move the uh, bullet to the direction that it came in from. So if the player is, let's say, facing up and then press a space and then the facing part is still up right so that's going to get sort of pushed into the shoot bullet part there and then we're going to link it to the class so that way it knows if it is up then it should go up if it's left go left if it's right then go right okay so let's try that so say direction is equals equals left first so that's going to be a string and then obviously we're going to say bullet dot left is minus equals speed so we move it towards the left of the screen okay so if direction equals 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 right then bullet dot left is going to be plus equals speed is equals equals up I think not top so say bullet dot top is going to be minus equals speed and then once again we have got direction equals equals down plus equals speed okay okay so we also need to dispose the bullet once he has um, sort of fulfilled its purpose so inside the timer inside of here what we can say is that at the moment we don't have any enemies anywhere around right so what if a bullet doesn't hit an enemy and it goes in like you know goes off to the corner because unless we tell that bullet to disappear from the form or from the game the object will still remain active with an event linked to it and that's a bad thing especially for game development because we are creating so many objects and removing so many objects dynamically from the game so um what we need to do here is we need to tell the program that if the bullet has gone to a certain level or gone past a certain level then you know stop the timer disposing and then dispose the bullet and everything else okay so let's do that now so if say if uh, bullet dot left right is less than 10 so if it's gone past like let's say this part of the form okay and then we can say all oh, these are the two pipe signs there say bullet dot left is um, I don't know how big was the form again 940 okay I mean you can say like maybe try out 860 probably just to see how that works out for us and then bullet dot top is say less than 10 from the top right or bullet dot top is greater than uh, 700 so i think give about like maybe 600 okay 
right so instead of here we can say you know, obviously bullet timer so bullet timer gonna have to stop right first of all and then we're gonna dispose the bullet timer so we don't really need it at this point okay so the event can go dispose and then we also need to dispose the bullet as well okay so bullet timer is equals to null so we're just gonna nullify it nullify both of these all right okay so you know just being extra cautious with the memory management on this one um because we might be able to shoot quite a lot so i don't want the game to slow down as we are shooting all of these bullets around okay so now what we can do is now if you do this function here this would make a lot more sense in what we're doing okay so it's time to make a new instance of the bullet class that we created so as you can see it comes up with bullet and it goes blue right so let's say shoot bullet like this equals new bullet right so we're creating a new instance of it although we don't have a constructor inside of this class we still can use a just a template of a constructor so the program will still work so say shoot bullet so right now we can call this bullet class using the shoot bullet keyword here okay so as you can see the things that are public we can access them so all these three variables are public here right now okay so we can access direction bullet left and bullet top okay so if i go back here again so as you can see you can get direction bullet top and bullet left all right so we're interested in the direction first so obviously direction is going to be equal to direction because that's the direction that we're going to be passing it through here and then we say shoot bullet dot so we've got bullet left right there so that is going to be equals to player dot left right plus player dot width times two so we want the bullet to originate from middle of the player from the left part okay and then obviously we're going to do the similar thing for the bullet dot top Plus right times two. Okay. And of course we are going to now use the public function. So we have a private event here and then we also have a public function. So this is the best thing about making a class. Okay, so we should be able to access this function from outside the class. So let's take a look at that. So we're gonna say a similar way we said the other one. So say shoot put it like that and then we can see that there is the make bullet function that's available there okay so you don't have to say anything else make bullet there so make bullet does take a form as a argument right so it needs a form as an argument and because we are this script here is attached to this form we can just say this okay so that's all we need for the bullet function so let's go and give this a try so if i move this so if you can see i can shoot the bullet right and then even if i make this one larger so see the bullet doesn't quite go through anywhere else it kind of whenever it goes to here it then dissipates so i can shoot as many bullets as i need to Okay, because each bullet is independent from the rest, so we don't have to control all of them. Okay, that's the best part of making with a class. I mean, you can even uh, do a few other modifications if you want to, to make it you know better and to suit the project that you're probably be working on at the moment. Okay, then, so let's go and work on the zombies right now. So in the zombies one, we're going to say picture box. And we just say zombie. So we're interested, we need to put a tag in for the zombies, right? So let's put a zombie tag inside the zombie picture boxes. So zombie picture boxes are going to have the image 
equals properties dot resources dot z down so because we created all the pictures with the z word in front of it that's the easier easier way to um, identify them okay and then we go to zombie dot left so here the random number comes in handy okay so we can go and say zero by nine hundred so you can generate anywhere between that zombie dot top is going to be equals to another random as well to about zero to about eight hundred okay so that way we can make sure like that zombies are not being spawned into the same location as before all right so we need to give that size mode for the zombie equals size modes auto size so it's not um, bound to any size it's just sizing up with the size of the pictures okay um what we're going to do is let's say zombie list dot add and then here we're going to add the zombie to the zombie list okay because that's the list that we created for all the zombies there okay and then what we're going to do is now finally we have to say this dot controls dot add okay so zombie is going to be added to the form and then lastly what we'll do is we'll say player dot to bring to front so sometimes the zombie picture box whenever it's added afterwards it will go and overlap the player so we can't really um, so we want the player to be on top of the zombie picture box um, images okay so let's go and I think we need another function for the drop ammo bit so you can say private void So inside this function we're going to do similar thing that we did to the zombies so we're going to say picture box all right let's call it ammo equals new picture box right there okay and then say ammo dot image it's going to be equals to ammo image auto size so in this one um, the zombies can be sort of spawned outside so we need to make sure like this is being spawned inside the actual form so the player can go and collect it alright so say random number dot next so we just spawn somewhere between like let's say 5 or even 10 and then say this dot Client size dot width minus ammo dot width so it stays inside of that form. Let's say ammo dot top is equals to next so ten so I just know it's gonna be a height minus ammo dot height. Okay. Lastly, we need to give it a tag. So let's give it a tag of ammo so we know what we're collecting here. Okay, and okay, so let's bring this one. So this. And then obviously, we bring in the ammo to the front. And then let's bring ammo to the front. Okay, and then we bring the player to the front as well. Okay, so that's that for the ammo. Uh, in that case, what we can do here is we can go and change the key up function here to say and ammo is still greater than zero. So what we're going to do here is ammo minus minus. So it's ammo. They're going to reduce. It's going to reduce one from the ammo list, right? So you can say if ammo is let's say less than one, 
then we just go drop ammo like this tool strip no drop ammo okay so right now i can go and see the ammo value is going down on the top so as soon as he hits zero, I can go collect one. So obviously I can't collect it at the moment. So the idea behind this game is that uh, when the game starts, you start off with 10 ammo. And then as, it, um, as you deplete through them, whenever you go to collect, you only get up to five. So that way the game is a little bit more challenging. Okay. All right, so that's working nicely. All right, so let's go and add a few more things to the timer. Okay, so right here we're going to go and say add image is equal to properties or resources dot is it dead? Yeah. And then we can stop the main game timer. So that is where the player's health has been depleted completely. So, you know, we stop the game timer, set everything, you know, game over to true so the game can be reset afterwards. Okay, then so inside the timer now, let's go and add a loop that we're going to check if we can collect the ammo in the game okay so let's say control um, x in this dot controls okay so and in here we're going to check if x is a picture box right and let's do a casting let's say string x dot tag is because it's ammo so the ammo uh, that we are making here does have a tag called ammo so we need to make sure like we can actually interact with the and see if our ammo goes up after we have collected it all right so say if player.bounds dot intersect with right so in this case you can say x dot bounds okay then. so inside of this if statement so if the play, player bounds intersect with x dot bounds right so what we're going to do is, is we're going to say so I say this dot controls dot remove so when we hit the ammo we want the ammo picture box to be removed from the scene and then we can also say this as well so we can do like a little casting here might to do another one actually so I say x right and then you can say dispose not display dispose like so Okay, instead of ammo, I'll put the ammo there. So instead of ammo, I'll say X. All right. So because we're going to be creating and removing so many, I feel a bit more comfortable having this line there, because then I can make sure like it's gone from the you know scene. So let's go to five. So and then lastly, we're going to add five to the existing number of ammo. Okay, so let's go and try that out for now. So if I go here and shoot up all my ten bullets. And then now I've got five additional bullets and then I get five more as soon as I hit zero again. Okay. And then when I collect it, it's gone from the scene. And then I can go and collect it again. So it's not being spawned like outside the scene, it's always spawning inside it. Okay. I think it spawned there so I think what we can do is I need to make sure like it doesn't spawn on top of the labels and such so instead of saying 10 here we can say like let's say 60 so even from the top it will always be a minimum 60 so on the left obviously you can spawn anywhere he wants to so this we can just make sure that you know the game is working as it should without covering any of the information or anything else Okay. Alright, cool. So now we can get started on the next bit. What we'll do now is we'll get started on the restart function. So that way we can actually run the restart function, get the zombies to populate the scene and work away from there inside the main timer. So if you go to the restart function now, 
say player image so this is the restart from, um, we're just restarting the game say properties resources to up right okay let's run it for each for loop here yeah? so we're gonna look be looking for a picture box say for example picture box here yeah. say i in inside the zombie list All right so because we're going to be adding the zombies inside of this when they are created right so when we want to reset we want to remove all the current zombies from the scene because they will have been in contact with the player so what we want to do is we want to make sure like the ones that spawn they spawn across the scene instead of what's on the player okay so this way what we can do is says this the controls but remove so we're going to remove i okay so we're going to remove all of the picture boxes from that list okay and then what we also do is we're going to clear the list so there's nothing else inside of it now let's do a for each loop so we're going to say if it's less than three so we want to at the in the beginning we just want to add three and i think three is the maximum number of zombies we want to have in this game okay so as long as the i is less than three we're going to run this function and then obviously it's going to run three times so it's going to make three zombies and then those zombies will be going towards the player okay so now let's go and set go up to false go down to false go left to false go right to false okay so reset player health back to a hundred score is zero well, let's say for example here okay ammo we can set it back to 10. okay and then lastly we can start the game timer dot start okay so what we can do now is let's go and link this one inside the constructor so right after that line needs we can then run this okay so if i want to run this up now so as you can see there's already two uh, okay as you can see there's already two zombies that spawned into the scene right after right and then there's the third one is right under there okay so the idea behind it is as soon as they spawn right we need to have a way to identify them inside the timer and then for me to go and sort of you know interact with the bullets and then obviously afterwards we can once you shoot at them if they get hit we remove them from the game okay so let's start with the zombies first so what we want to do is we want to create a sort of like a very basic type of ai that just follows the player so whatever the player's location is we want to move the zombies in towards that location okay so we're gonna say if right so x is picture box and Okay, so what we want is the zombie tag because once the zombies are created on the scene they do have a tag called zombie and then what we check is we will find here is if right so if x dot left oops okay x dot left is greater than player dot left right so okay so the left of the zombie picture box is greater than player dot left so it's in the other side then what we're going to do is we're going to move the zombie towards the left of the player right so you can say x dot left is minus equals zombie speed so it's the speed of the zombie and then we also need to um might be worth actually copying this line there's too many brackets dot image equals properties resources dot left oh so it's going to be z left okay so in this case if the zombies are on the right side of the player 
then we want to move the zombies towards the player from the left and it should show the left image so it's the z left is this one here so it should be facing that way and moving towards the player okay okay then so let's go and do this again so i'm just going to copy and paste that in this case it's going to be if it's less than right so if it's on this side and that the player is on this side we want that to go that way so we're going to add it to the zombie speed and this is going to be z right instead of z left okay Okay, and paste it again. In this case, it's going to be top. So, if the zombie is below the player, right? So, sorry, if the zombie is above the player, then we're going to move the zombie down, right? So, it's going to say down, and then we'll just copy that again and move it there. In this case, we're going to say that way so if there's if the player is on top of the zombie so if the zombie is on the bottom of the screen plays on the top of the screen we want the zombie to move upwards towards the player so we go z up okay so let's try it so give this one a quick look so we've got four different directions four different if statements if the if the player is on the right sorry if the player is on the left side of the zombie we move the zombie towards the left if it's on the right move it right if it's on the top then, oh, sorry, if it's in the bottom, move it to, towards the player, and then if it's on the top, then move it towards the player on the top. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at how that works. So right now, as you can see, okay, so for some reason that is that's stuck there. Okay, I think I know why. That's because I didn't change the left here. Oopsie. Okay, so that's top, and then top, and then this is supposed to be left and left. I think I mixed up the signs for these ones here. Okay, so I think the mistake that I made here is I had the plus and the minus uh, in the wrong places. So if the sorry, if the x dot top is greater than the player dot top, so that means like if the zombie is still on, if it's greater, so if it's below the player, I kind of mistook that one. So if it's below the player, then we're going to need to minus it so it actually goes towards the player to the top. And if it's less than the top, then we need to, to add to the speed so you come and matches the player in the bottom of the scene. Okay. So what we also need to do is now, um, I think we'll do the damage in a minute. So before that, we need to figure out how to. So this if statement is directly below the ammo. If statement still inside the loop right so we're gonna continue to stay inside the loop for a while until we actually get to some of the other bits that we need to work on okay then so for now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new loop inside of the existing one because the zombies and the but uh, bullets are being created dynamically we need to have a way to check whether those two dynamic contents collide okay so let's just say for each once again, do a control. So this time instead of X, let's call it J. This dot controls, right? So then we're going to say if X is picture box and it's a string. bullet right so i think we'll do the j for the bullet instead of the x because the x is already done with the zombie over there so it'd be a lot easier to do that okay and then obviously we say j is picture box and j dot tag is equals equals bullet so this is one condition uh, instead of or we need to do and so we need to do both of these conditions to be true okay so and then you can say x is picture box and x dot tag is, is um, zombie okay so see this is what happens when you don't do the casting so it just says that you know there's a warning here so, so it's best to oh you can also do it with the two string but I prefer the casting method okay so in this if statement we're checking for two conditions so we need the J we need that J to be a picture box and it to have a bullet we need that X to be a string and it needs to have a zombie uh, it needs to have a um, 
zombie tank right i think i made a mistake here so i think this one's supposed to be up and this one's supposed to be down okay much better there you go yeah. so as you can see i think before you all right it's actually quite creepy following you viewing the scene all right excellent yeah sorry about that i think i made a mistake there so I did fix that part, but then I kind of forgot that. So while I was typing that, I kind of saw that. All right, so now let's check if bullet and the zombie are hitting each other first. So let's say if extra bounds don't intersect with say J dot bounds, right? So both of these are intersecting with each other. Then we can say score plus plus, right? Once the bullet is the zombie, what we want to do is we want to dispose both the bullet and the zombie. So what we can do here is this dot controls dot remove J. So that's the bullet, right? And then of course uh, we're gonna have to say J dot. You know, let's do the picture box style. Okay, so J. Just bracket it all up and then say dispose. So we can dispose that from there, and then I assume we also need to dis this the controls to remove. We also need to remove the X, which is the zombie at this point. Dispose the X the similar way, so it's no longer used. So the resource is no longer used in any of it. Okay. So once we have done that, we also need to dis we also need to remove it from the zombie list. Okay, so we need to remove the X because the X is the zombie here. So we kind of need to remove the X from the zombie list. Okay. I just make sure you be careful about the brackets because I'm using like, this one is the other bracket. This is for the picture box and this is actually for the remove function there. Okay, so let's go and do the final thing here is called make zombies so once you have killed a zombie you're going to make another zombie so you know you'll constantly have zombies spawning everywhere in the scene okay right, let's go give it a try so right now i have got these zombies here so i shoot that it goes away so that kills is being updated as well so the bullet goes away as well ah no more bullet left Right. So it's actually quite good because once the bullet is being spawned across the scene, you can't just sit in one place and uh, play the game, so you kind of have to move. Okay, so that's good. So far so good. So I think I've got up to 40 kills and then it's still spawning and all right. Excellent. So we still need to do um, one more little bit is that when the player actually hits the enemies we need to reduce the player health. So if let's say player dot bounds dot intersect with let's see in this case we're looking for the zombie. So x dot bounds, right? So and then Say player health is say minus equals one. Okay. So right now if I run this. Okay, so okay, so there is a obviously a little bit of a problem here, but I'll show you that. Right, so what happened here is zombies came and attacked and then the dead picture showed up because we that's what we told it to do here so once the health is below that right so that's what you should do and as soon as I press the button it kind of switched back to that and then it's kind of still shooting I can still shoot although the game is over okay so we inside the key down say if game over is equals equals true right and then we're just going to return that right here so while the game over is false, we can still play, but if the game over is true, then 
we don't want the button to be pressed okay so let's just wait for that so at the moment I can't press anything but I can still press the space bar to shoot so I'm going to stop that as well okay so that line is stopping the character from being changed and then we also need to change this as well because we still need the um, enter key to be pressed to restart so we can't really do the if you know game over is true then return so what we can do here is and you can say game over is equals equals false so as long as game over is false and that ammo and all the other stuff here still work so let's see So if I die now, then if I try to move or okay, perfect. So the game is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is excellent. All right, so now we need to check. All right, so if the enter key is pressed or released during uh, when the game is over. And then we can simply just run the restart function. So let's go and try that. So say if key called equals equals keys dot enter. And we also to check if game over is true in this case. Okay, and then say restart game. So I think inside the restart game function, we did set the game over to false. We did not. Okay, that's something that we have to do. So game over to false because otherwise it's gonna stay true, you know, whenever it's set. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that now. So I'm gonna say go shoot, shoot you, go away zombie. Mammal. Alright then, so I'm dead now. If I click OK, uh, sorry, if I press Enter, then ammo's going back to 10. Alright, that's all happening. Perfect. And, okay. I'm dead now okay so that's it really um, as you can see now so you know it doesn't matter where you actually die um, there won't be any zombies around you when you have died so that uh, that's the courtesy of the zombie list so that's the benefit of us um, sort of using the zombie list as the uh, list where we spawn the zombies in and we put them in so it becomes a lot easier for us to remove them so in the end of the game if you just run a for each loop to remove them from the form oftentimes it misses one or two so that way it becomes a lot more complicated because sometimes you'll have the zombie right on top of the player if they're interacting uh, you're losing health so it's not really fair to you know begin the game with losing health straight away so it just gives you a little bit of a um, uh, you know option to customize the gameplay in a way uh, this was one of the longest tutorials i think i've done Okay, uh, I do hope uh, you know you have enjoyed it. Uh, just to backtrack on what we did, uh, we downloaded the pictures of MuICT. We set it up on here. Uh, we created a custom class, uh, right? Um, called Bullet, and then we put all our main game logic inside the form1.cs file, where we sort of put in all the things that the game needs to do, including the timer, key up, key down, drop ammo make zombies uh, and shoot bullet functions right so they pretty much do everything that we need to do and we also have the restart function available for us as well so once the game is over you play it once the player has died you can press enter to restart the game again okay so i do hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you on the next one